Uh, when you speak about democracy, you've been talking basically about political democracy, about, about government. Uh, certainly in the 20th century, many people uh, brought up the idea of social democracy, that you can't separate um, politics from economics and that economics and, and economic uh, uh, democracy is necessary to support a, a, a truly liberal dem democracy, political democracy. To what extent do you think that the two are uh, you know, help each other? To what extent do they separate each other? I promise I didn't plant this question, but that's really the crucial argument of the book, that if we think of democracy simply as one person, one vote, we've got it all wrong. It has this ethical dimension to it, and from the perspective of, I'm inclined to say everybody but Alexander Hamilton in the 18th century, if you saw economic inequality emerging, it would kill democracy. Um, John Adams believed that, Madison believed it, Jefferson believed it, Franklin believed it, James Wilson believed it. Hamilton is the outlier who thought that an interlock interlocking directorate of the wealthy was what was going to make America great. Everybody else was in agreement that from the ancient world on, it was understood that self-government would only work if the people had sufficient independence as individuals to feel as though they had a share in the government. That's the central argument, I think, in Tocqueville that what makes possible the internalizing of this ethic of reciprocity, which manifests itself in town meeting, manifests itself in the jury. I mean, the point of a jury, right, is that you have to come to see each other's point of view because you have to come to a decision. That requires this sensibility that Tocqueville thought was so crucial. He argued, invoking the 18th century uh, writers who had made these arguments, that this can only work if people are more equal rather than more unequal. The contrast he drew between the French aristocracy that owned everything and had all the political power and everyone else who had neither was, from his perspective, the reason why France was destined not to nurture a democracy and why the United States, if it could contain these dynamics that were beginning in the Jackson era to spread apart different people in the different regions, if it could contain that dynamic, then it could continue to survive as a democracy. I think it's a very real question whether unless we address the question of inequality, we will move back in the direction of what I see as a vibrant democracy. Mm -hmm.